Okay, we're back with our side attraction top shelf recommendations. I am Kelly and I actually have an awesome book to recommend to you today. I don't know if you heard our intro episode, but I definitely said a couple of times that I love a heist. I love thievery and shenanigans. And so this one has all of that in spades. I am bringing you Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This book is really, really fun to read. The whole thing was dark and gritty, but somehow she was able to keep it really lighthearted at the same time. All of the characters were very kind of more extreme versions of the things that they were. So you have Kaz, who's the leader, who is a master thief. He can talk his way into and out of any situation, uh, great at bargaining and businesshood, and yet he chooses to be in this criminal underworld. And then you have Inej, also called the Wraith, who is basically like this mixture of Nightwing and Huntress from DC. She grew up with traveling performers. So she has a background of being basically an acrobat and she can just like throw knives and sneak in in the night. She's a spy. Uh, And she's also very religious. She wants to be this badass criminal. And yet she also has this moral compass that is not quite at odds with, but does guide a lot of the way that she is interacting with that world, which is really interesting. You have Jesper, who is a sharpshooter and can and is like kind of the comedic relief of the group. Um, and he's a betting man, so he gets himself into situations. You have Nina, who is a soldier slash spy who kind of has turned into a heart render, which is like a magical... It's this book's version of like a magician. They're called the Grisha, and a heart render is a subsect of that. They can basically manipulate the body in very dangerous ways. So you have healers who can heal, and you have heart renders who do the opposite, who can like induce heart attacks. Yeah, exactly. They can. That's horrible. (laughs) They can take the air out of your lungs. Like they're they're very scary, actually. Take my breath away. Break my heart. (laughs) Her foil in this one who's on their same team is Matthias who's a witch hunter who his job is to hunt down the Grisha and yet they are on the same team for this heist. This book follows them on a heist where they're trying to break into this place that is impossible to get into for reasons that they don't this group doesn't actually care that much about beyond the money but they they The book does tell you the reasons and they're very nefarious. It's very cool. I really like the way magic works in this book. Yeah. Tell me about the magic system. It's very similar to the magic in the book that you were talking about last time. Uh, Foundry side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Where the magic has to come from somewhere. So you have these basically firebenders and waterbenders and things like that who can manipulate these elements. But what they do is they take the elements that are already there in the world around them. So like, say you're a, you're a fire person and you have like carbon and whatever else in the air already. So what they can do is manipulate those elements to come together. And then the firebenders basically will take, like they'll bring Flint around with them. So they'll have all the elements and they just have to get them going. And then they can make that all work. Given a spark, they can make a forest fire. Exactly. Okay. And so the, the heart renders and the healers can do all of these things that I just said, but they have to have somebody in their line of sight. So it's not just like, I'm thinking about Danny and I'm Reach pissed out. at her for some reason. So <laughs> no, we have to be eye to eye. Okay. You can't like reach out and touch someone via telephone or something. Like that. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's really and cool. it's really cool. Yeah. She's got, they've got characters with accents in this book, which I always think is delightful where if you can read an accent and you read it in that voice. So we've got a couple of Russian accents in this book. It does have a style that some people like, some people don't where it'll jump chapter to chapter and follow a different character. Okay. Um, Lots of POVs, point of views. Kind of. Um, so it tells their story and it focuses on that character, but and something that I really liked, it stays in third person. So even though you're now getting a different viewpoint, 
you're still reading it as the reader and not like jumping into their I did this, I did that. Oh, okay. So okay. all right. Okay, so you said dark, gritty, we've got these magic things. What kind of tech level are we talking? Are we talking medieval time? Are we talking there's you said sharpshooter. Is that with bow and arrow? Is that with guns? What? This is with revolvers. Um, this is kind of in the, like a Victorian kind of vibe. Okay. All right. Um, I, I don't know it. if you guys have seen Shadow and Bone on Netflix. It is actually oh, built it. off of the Shadow and Bone, I think is the name of a book in a different series. It's in the same world as Six of Crows. You actually see pretty prominent characters, Kaz and Inej and Jesper in that show. Oh, cool. And they're, okay. and it's kind of nice. So if you're the kind of person that likes to put a face to a name, I recommend watching at least the first episode of Shadow and Bone, even though they're not telling the same story. Shadow and Bone takes place in the same universe and takes place before Six of Crows. So you'll get a little bit of the backstory of the characters in this one and kind of understand a little bit more of what their motivations might be. But you don't have to. Uh, I read this book a couple of years ago. And I only started watching the show very recently. I haven't even finished it yet. So you definitely don't need to have that backstory to jump into this book. It definitely stands alone. Yeah, That's cool that there's a show, though. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more shows right now that for fantasy, and I'm so here for it. I wonder what it would be like. And if you're an author and you've had this experience, please let me know. So say you're pitching your book to a network. What that moment is like when they say, like, yes, we want to take your book and put it on the screen. Just hearing that moment where you hear that validation of, we want to show this to the world. <gasps> I can't even imagine. <laughs> I've heard that it's um, both a blessing and a curse. Like if you, like some authors are like, no, we will never allow this to be put into film because it would ruin it because mm. of the, the concepts and, and how it would not adapt to film very well. And some are like, sure let's do this and but they want more creative control than the studio is willing to give them and stuff like that i can see that i have a feeling that well, this is my opinion but i think that any book getting adapted to a tv show even if they do a horrible job is just going to get more eyes on the book and the same number of people would be reading it without the tv show so I'm definitely here for the TV shows, even if they kind of, when the authors are like, oh, it's going to ruin the story, mm, but not everybody likes to read. Right. But if That's somebody true. ends up liking the show, then they might read the book to get, or if they hear horrible things about the show and, you know, they, the story interests them, then they might pick up the book where they wouldn't have done in the beginning. Yeah. They might not have even known about it before. Mm -hmm. Well, so far this show does a great job of laying out what the world is like and the actors do a great job and I'm really liking it. So that's awesome. Um, so six of crows, six, so of, six crows. of crows by Lee Bardugo. It is a duology and I recommend it. I've read both. They're both great and it reads like a TV show anyways. So like lots you'll have of a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Lots of action, lots of snark and it's very easy. It's easy to, follow along it's who's great. your favorite character out of the sixth i really like inej mm. um the wraith she's got knife throwing skills and she's sneaky and she's very very like roguelike all of them are really quite roguelike mm. obviously i guess since they're doing a heist are they are they all together always or are they just getting together for this heist a couple of them are like pretty much business partners. Kaz oh, okay. and Inej and Jesper hang out a lot. Um, a couple of other people were pulled in specifically for this heist. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would recommend it. Some of the YouTubers that I follow, this is one of their favorite books. Like if they could only own two or three books, Six of Crows would be one of those. I would agree with that. I, I haven't read it before, but Shadow and Bone has been on my um, to watch list for mm. since it came out. And then you, when you started talking about this and you mentioned that it was uh, Shadow and Bone, I was like, oh, we should rot watch that. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like the I like the idea of the setting. And um, from the preview, I saw the show. It looked really neat. It had very cool outfits. 
which I uh, I like very oh, cool, cool outfits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I've also seen it on our bookshelf for a while. It sounds awesome. The whole I love. I love stories that intertwine within a universe. Mm-hmm. Yep, so six of crows, six dangerous outcasts, one impossible heist. The book looks really cool. It's got black pages all around. And you can find it at bookstores. Near you. Near you. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs>